Hi, I'm Rena. Before I dive into my story, don't forget to like and subscribe for more. I always thought I had it all figured out. Single life? Loved it. Freedom, independence, you name it. But when I met Daniel, I thought, why not add some icing to the cake? So, we got married. At first, it was like living a dream. Romantic dinners, late night talks. Then came the wake-up call. One evening, during a quiet dinner at home, Daniel mentioned his sister, Liz, needed a place to stay. Just for a couple of weeks, he said. I didn't mind. Family's important, right? But weeks turned into months, and Liz's short stay looked permanent. I remember one night, I asked Daniel, when is Liz planning to move out? Daniel shrugged. Family sticks together, Rena. She needs us right now. But what about us? I insisted. We need our space, too. He just didn't get it. The tipping point? His brother, Mike's birthday bash. Daniel insisted we host it. Our tiny apartment was crammed. I spent the day running around, cooking, cleaning. Midway through the party, I overheard Liz whispering to Daniel. Rena doesn't seem too thrilled with all this. Daniel chuckled. She'll adjust. Family first, you know. I was fuming, but it got worse. Post-party, our place was a mess. Daniel and I were clearing up when I couldn't hold back any longer. This is too much, Daniel. It's like your family's needs always trump mine. He looked at me, cold and distant. My family's important to me, Rena. If you can't accept that, maybe you shouldn't be here. I felt a chill down my spine. This wasn't the Daniel I knew. The final straw came a week later. Daniel walked in, tension written all over his face. Rena, we need to talk. What's up? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady. It's about Liz. She's struggling with the kids, and she needs more support. We need to make more room for her in the apartment. I stared at him, disbelief and anger swirling inside me. And what does that mean for us? He avoided my gaze. I think it's best if you find another place to stay for a while. My heart sank. This was my home, too. You're choosing them over me? I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It's not about choosing, Reyna. It's about doing what's right for my family. I was speechless. How did it come to this? I remembered the days when it was just us, happy and carefree. And now, he was asking me to leave my own home? Fine, I said, my voice barely a whisper. I'll go, but don't expect me to come back. The next day, I packed my bags. Every fabric, every photo, a reminder of the life I thought we were building together. As I zipped up my suitcase, I took one last look around. This was no longer my home. It was just a place where I once lived. A beautiful lie. I left the apartment, my heart heavy, but my head held high. As I walked down the street, the cool air hit my face. And in that moment, I made a promise to myself. I would find my happiness again, no matter what it took. After Daniel kicked me out, I was lost, wandering the streets with my suitcase. Then, I remembered my old college friend, Jenny. I dialed her number, my fingers trembling. Hey, Rena. Long time no see. What's up? Jenny, I... I need a place to crash. Just for a few days. Whoa. Are you okay? What happened? It's Daniel. He... He chose his family over me. She was silent for a moment. Come over. We'll figure this out. Staying with Jenny was a reality check. Her tiny apartment was a far cry from what I was used to but it was warm and welcoming. You know, Rena, you always seemed so in control, Jenny said one evening as we sipped tea. What went wrong? I sighed. I lost myself, Jenny. In trying to be the perfect wife, I forgot who I was. She nodded. Time to find Rena again. What about your job? You were so passionate about your marketing career. I quit when I married Daniel, said I'd focus on us. Big mistake. Get back out there, Rena. You were a star in the field. Her words sparked something in me. The next morning, I started job hunting. It was tough, with so many rejections. But then, an old contact, Mike, called. Rena, heard you're looking. We have an opening in our marketing team. Interested? Yes, definitely, I almost shouted into the phone. Within weeks, I was back in the game, working hard, feeling alive. Jenny and I celebrated with a night out. It was then I bumped into an old hobbyist group I used to hang out with. Rena, where have you been? Still into photography? Asked Sam, one of the members. I've been... out of touch. But yeah, I still love it. We're meeting tomorrow for a photo walk. Join us. I did, and it felt like coming home. 
I reconnected with old friends, made new ones, and my camera was my constant companion. Slowly, I was rebuilding my life, piece by piece. He looked like he wanted to say more, but I didn't stay to hear it. One day, as I was leaving work, Daniel appeared. He looked distraught. Rena, we need to talk. I have nothing to say to you. Please, just hear me out. I... I made a mistake. I stopped, my heart racing. But then, I steadied myself. Your mistake was thinking you could choose when to have me in your life. I'm not an option, Daniel. I walked away, leaving him standing there, alone. It was empowering, standing up for myself. In that moment, I realized I didn't just survive the fall. I was rising, stronger than ever. Life was changing. The job at the marketing firm was challenging, but I was nailing it. Every day brought new opportunities to grow. Mike, my boss, was a mentor and a cheerleader rolled into one. Rena, your campaign ideas are brilliant. Keep it up. During a team meeting, I pitched a daring new concept. The room fell silent, then erupted into discussions. Sarah, a colleague, leaned over. I love your idea. Let's grab lunch and brainstorm more. Lunch with Sarah became a regular thing. She was a whirlwind of ideas and enthusiasm, and we clicked instantly. One day over coffee, she asked, So Rena, what's your story? You seem to have a lot more to you than meets the eye. I shared bits of my past, about Daniel, and my journey so far. Girl, you're like a phoenix rising from the ashes. You should totally join our women's support group. It's a great place to share and grow. I took up her offer. The group was a mix of incredible women, each with their own battles and victories. Sharing my story felt liberating, and their support was overwhelming. Rena, your strength is inspiring, said Elena, the group's founder. Remember, we rise by lifting others. Inspired by these women, I started volunteering at a local shelter on weekends. It felt good giving back, and each person I met added a new perspective to my life. Work was bustling, and my social circle was expanding. But then, Daniel reappeared. He called one evening. Rena, I've been thinking about us a lot. Can we meet? Just once? I hesitated. Okay, Daniel. One meeting. We met at a park the autumn leaves painting a bittersweet scene. I've missed you, Reyna. I realize now how wrong I was. Can we try again? I looked at him, the memories flooding back. But I was not the same person anymore. Daniel, I've moved on. I'm building a life where I am my own priority. I hope you find peace, but it won't be with me. He looked like he wanted to say more, but I didn't stay to hear it. Life kept moving. Sarah and I launched our campaign, and it was a hit. Mike gave us both a well-deserved raise. You're going places, Rena. Proud to have you on my team, he said, patting my back. In the evenings, I'd stroll through the city, my camera capturing life's unscripted moments. Photography wasn't just a hobby anymore. It was a part of who I was. During one such walk, I bumped into Alex, a fellow photographer I'd met through the hobbyist group. Rena, your shots are incredible. Ever thought of showcasing them? I hadn't, but Alex insisted. With his help, I organized my first photography exhibition. The turnout was beyond my expectations, and the feedback was heartwarming. Your work speaks volumes, Rena. It's raw and real, Alex said, smiling at me. The exhibition was a success, and I felt a sense of accomplishment I hadn't felt in years. My journey wasn't easy, but here I was, stronger and more fulfilled than ever. Life had its rhythm now. Work, photography, friends. Then, out of the blue, Jenny called one morning with news that jolted me. Rena, have you seen the news? Daniel's family. They're in deep trouble. What? What happened? A huge financial scandal. It's all over the news. They're practically ruined. I was stunned. Despite everything, I never wished them harm. Later that day, Daniel called. Rena, I need your help. The family's in a mess. We've got no one else to turn to. Why me, Daniel? After all that's happened. We're sorry, Rena. I know I've hurt you, but please, I'm begging you. His voice was desperate, but the pain of the past was still fresh in my mind. I struggled with the decision. Sarah noticed my distress at work. You look troubled. What's up? It's Daniel and his family. They're in trouble and asking for my help. Rena, remember your journey. You've come so far. Don't let them drag you back into that chaos. Her words hit home. I pondered over my past struggles, my growth, my newfound independence. It was a hard choice, 
but I knew what I had to do. The next day, I met Daniel at the same park where we'd last spoken. Rena, have you thought about it? Will you help us? I took a deep breath. I have sympathy for what you're going through, Daniel, but I can't help you. I've moved on from that part of my life. But Rena, it's not just about me. It's about the whole family. I understand, but it's time for me to put myself first. I hope you find a way through this, Daniel. He looked crushed, but I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. I was closing a chapter that had caused me so much pain. As I walked away, I felt a mix of emotions. Sadness for what they were going through, relief that I was out of it, and strength in knowing I had made the right decision for myself. Life moved on. Mike congratulated me on my firm stand. Rena, you're a rock. Standing up for yourself, that takes guts. Sarah and Jenny were proud, too. You did the right thing, Rena. You're an inspiration. The women's support group applauded my decision. Rena, you're a true example of empowerment, Elena said, her eyes beaming with pride. This trial was a test of my resolve, and I had passed. I was not the same Rena who was once tossed aside. I was stronger, wiser, and in control of my life. Life had a new rhythm, a melody of independence and growth. At work, things were booming. Mike called me into his office one day. Rena, you've outdone yourself with these campaigns. We're promoting you to lead the creative team. The news hit me like a wave of fresh air. Thank you, Mike. I won't let you down. He smiled. I know you won't. You're one of the best we've got. That evening, at my regular visit to the women's support group, I shared my success. Promotion? That calls for a celebration, Elena announced. The group cheered, their faces a canvas of genuine happiness. These women had become my second family. Photography, too, had become a significant part of my life. Alex and I collaborated on several projects, blending our styles seamlessly. Your eye for detail is incredible, Rena. Have you ever thought about a solo exhibition? I mulled over it. A solo exhibition? It was a dream I never knew I had until then. One Sunday, while setting up for a photo shoot in the park, a familiar face walked by. Daniel. He looked different, worn out. He stopped, looking at my setup. Your work is amazing, Rena. Thanks, Daniel. He lingered for a moment. I heard about your promotion. Congrats. Thanks. There was an awkward silence. Then he spoke again. I'm sorry for everything, Rena. I've lost a lot, but the biggest loss was you. I looked at him, a mix of pity and detachment in my eyes. I hope you find peace, Daniel. Goodbye. As he walked away, I felt a chapter closing. A door firmly shut on a past that no longer served me. My life was full of little joys. Impromptu coffee dates with Sarah, photo walks, volunteering, and the thrill of new challenges at work. One evening, while sifting through my photos, Jenny said, You know, Rena, you've come a long way. You're not just surviving, you're thriving. Her words echoed in my heart. I had found happiness in the little things, in moments of quiet triumphs, and in the bonds I'd built along the way. I was ready for my solo exhibition. The gallery was full of my journey captured through the lens moments of pain, resilience, and joy. People admired the photos, their expressions a mix of awe and emotion. Your work tells a story, Rena, a powerful one, a visitor commented. I smiled. Thank you. It's been quite a journey. As the evening wound down, I stood there, looking at the life I had built, piece by piece. My career, my passion for photography, my friends, my independence. It was a tapestry woven with threads of resilience, strength, and hope. Life had shown me its darkest sides, but in those shadows, I found my light, my happiness, my self-worth. It was never tied to my marriage. It was, and always would be, within me. Standing in that gallery, surrounded by my art, my friends, and my achievements, I knew I was ready for whatever came next. My future was mine to shape, and I looked forward to every moment of it. Rena's story, one of courage and transformation, has finally reached its conclusion. Throughout her journey, we witnessed moments of vulnerability, strength, and ultimately, triumph. Which part of Rena's story resonated with you deeply? Was it her initial struggle and the painful realization of her husband's betrayal? Perhaps it was her journey of self-recovery, finding solace and support in friends like Jenny and Sarah, and rediscovering her passions and professional ambitions. 
Or was it the defining moment when she chose her well-being over returning to a toxic relationship, despite Daniel's plea for help? Each phase of her journey presents a facet of human resilience and the power of self-respect. Share your reflections in the comments below. Which part of her story do you connect with and why? What lessons do you think we can all take from Reina's experiences? This is more than just a story. It's a mirror reflecting many of our own life experiences. Your insights and personal stories are what make this conversation enriching and meaningful. And, as we close this chapter of Rena's life, if her story has touched, inspired, or provoked thought, please show your support by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Your engagement helps us bring more such stories to life and fosters a community where we can all share, learn, and grow. Thank you for being part of Rena's journey. Now let's open the floor to your thoughts and continue this vital conversation.